Okay, so I think we'll still have a few folks trickling in for a bit, but um, we can go ahead and get started. I just really appreciate um, you all being being here with us tonight. My name is Meredith Soniat. I am the project manager of the Alawai Bridge Project. Um, and yeah, really excited to, to speak with you tonight and share a little bit of an update on the project um, and hear from you, of course, as to um, your comments on the draft EA. So um, just a brief overview of what we're gonna talk through tonight. We are gonna start with a welcome and very, very brief introductions, just so you see, um, so you know who is on the call from the project team. Um, and then we're gonna go into a bit of the, well, we'll have a Zoom tutorial to make sure that everybody can, can appropriately um, use Zoom, though many of us have become quite familiar over the last year. Uh, go into the project background overview, um, and then a we're gonna tell you kind of where we are within the environmental process, talk about next steps and how to provide formal comment on the draft environmental assessment. Um, and then we'll go into these breakout rooms that you can choose your topic based on um, areas of interest. So you'll have an opportunity to visit most or to visit multiple rooms over the course of the evening. Um, so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to John Nauchi, who is the Deputy Director of the Department of Transportation Services to say a few words. Hello, I'm Mike Kako. On behalf of Mayor Blangiardi, the City and County of Honolulu, and our Department of Transportation Services, I would like to welcome you all to tonight's meeting. Uh, first of all, you know, mahalo ya oko pakahi apau for spending your evening with us to learn more about and to share feedback on the proposed Alapono Alawai Bridge project. You know, this project has been a concept literally for decades, dating back 70 years or so, as far back as the 1950s. And we are really excited to finally be at this point reviewing the draft environmental assessment. A combined NEPA and HRS 343 draft environmental assessment was published last week on Tuesday, March 23rd and filed with the State Office of Environmental Quality Control, or OEQC, which opened the public review period, which does continue through April 22nd. And we understand that some of you may have reviewed the, the draft environmental assessment already. And for others, this might be your first exposure to the project. So we will again share some background of how we got to this proposed project, provide an overview of the project, and share the status of the environmental review. After we share this information, we really look forward to hearing from you in our breakout sessions, of which um, there are many, and you can choose um, and move between them. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it back to Meredith to introduce the project team to walk us through the project background. And again, mahalo nui for joining us this evening, and we really look forward to hearing from everyone. All right. So uh, thank you so much, John, for that. Uh, and. You know, I'm not gonna go through a laundry list of introductions um, of those of us who are working on the project. I just wanna kind of give you an overarching view of who, uh, what agencies are involved, oh, pardon me, and, um, and what other, uh, what members of the consultant team or who are members of the consultant team. You can distinguish most of us because we have this background uh, to help help guide, you know, when we're in the breakout sessions, you know, who who is from the project team. Um, I believe most of us have this tonight. Uh, so the city and county of Honolulu is the project sponsor. I am, I work within the city and county department of transportation services. The lead federal agency is the federal highway administration. We're also working really closely with the Hawaii department of transportation um, on this project. And, you know, we have quite a few folks on the consultant team as well, who are leading various, um, various elements of the project that got us to this point today um, to this draft environmental assessment and uh, that we can talk through a bit more detail um, later in the meeting. So just wanted to walk through that briefly. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Natalie from PBR Hawaii to walk through a bit of a Zoom tutorial. Thank you, Meredith. Um, there's a lot of people in, in attendance at tonight's meeting, um, so we can make sure that we hear the presentations during the main groups. We ask that you generally please keep yourself muted when not talking. Um, in the breakout groups, there will be more of an opportunity to unmute and ask questions along with an open chat. Um, in the meantime, uh, there are some 
nonverbal ways to interact. Um, and we'll be monitoring the chats as well. Um, can you go to the next slide? Um, so this is a quick overview on how to mute and unmute um, and start and stop your video. Um, these icons should be in the bottom left-hand side of your window. Um, if you're having trouble with internet speed, um, you can. it's recommended that you uh, stop your video and that should um, help, help the audio come through. Um, the other thing is uh, how to see the chat functions, attendees, and raise hand and use feedback buttons. Um, also in that bottom uh, navigation bar, if you hit the chat function, a pop-up window should either come up to the right-hand side or independently, um, and you'll be able to send us um, individual chats to the co-host during the main session, and then in the breakout session, they will um, go to everybody. Um, you can also see the participant list, and um, there's opportunities to raise hands um, and also provide a thumbs up um, when you open that participant list. Uh, we also found out there was an update today, in fact, so uh, you can also use the reaction button at the bottom if they're not showing up in the participant list. Um, and then the last thing, uh, sometimes the when you're showing the screen, um, the view side by side can get a little bit small. So there's a slider, uh, this, the vertical bar, if you click on that and pull it side to side, you can make the, the presentation screen a little bit larger. Um, and that is what we have right now. Um, the last thing is Zoom polling. So we're gonna be having two small sessions of polling throughout this meeting. Uh, we have a practice question uh, and then two kind of um, more intro questions right now, and then we'll have a couple more in a few minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and open the first poll. Um, it should pop up on your screen. And then if you click your response and click submit, uh, the responses will come through. Um, and once again, this one's a practice question. Uh, what is your normally your favorite way to get around on Oahu? Walking, rolling, bicycling, skateboarding, driving, swimming, or taking a boat? Um, we're at 62%, so we'll leave this open for a couple seconds more. Okay, so most people still like driving, uh, followed by walking and rolling. Um, once again, that was just the, the practice poll. Uh, so now we're gonna be opening the second poll. Um, I see some people did not see the first poll. If the second one doesn't pop up, please send me another message. Um, and if it still isn't working, you can send your response in the chat and we'll aggregate it with the other one. So how did you find out about tonight's meeting? Um, you can select multiple options for this. Oh, and my apologies, uh, Waikiki Improvement. I may have forgotten to actually share those results, uh, which I will make sure I do on this one. I jumped the gun. Thank you, Joy. Ooh, people are filling out this one pretty fast. And wide range of answers here. If anyone answered other um, and wanna share, you can share that in the chat with us. Um, we got a comment right now, you can only chat with co-hosts. When we go into the breakout rooms, uh, we will, you will be able to chat with everyone. Oh, okay, some people heard it back or heard about it from uh, the news and a school email and newsletters, um, which weren't options. So thank you. Um, share results. So it seems like most people responded word of mouth uh, for this meeting, um, followed by, let's see here, they're very small on my screen. Oh, newsletters and social media, Facebook. All right, we have one more poll for right now.
And this one is how familiar are you with the proposed project? Um, once again, it's multiple choice. Uh, these are just some of the options. If you have other uh, thoughts that you want included in this response, feel free to chat them um, and I'll make sure that those get aggregated. Once again, people are really picking up steam on this. Okay, a couple more seconds. Okay. So most people have read a little bit about it. Um, we're hoping tonight we're able to short, share a little bit more about that and answer questions that you may have on the project and process. Um, and for those of you that have reviewed the draft environmental assessment, thank you for taking the time to do that. And we're really looking forward to um, sharing more information with you and answering the questions uh, in the meantime. So thank you. Great, thanks, Natalie. Uh, so at this time, I'm gonna walk through a bit of the project background. Um, and so I kind of want to take a big picture look before we dig into the project itself. Um, so this, there is a complete streets ordinance within the city and county of Honolulu um, that was signed in 2012. And it sets forth some goals and priorities for all transportation projects like improving safety, improving access and mobility for everyone, um, balancing the needs of all users and encouraging opportunities for physical activity. Um, what you see on the screen here is a roadway with designated comfortable space for all users. Uh, it's really rare that we have that amount of space in one roadway. So kind of, we tend to look at this from more of a network perspective and how can we create a comfortable, safe network for all users. Um, and that's really where the all the bridge uh, proposed project fits in, creating this additional link in the network for people walking and biking. So um, getting into the specific project, the primary purpose is to improve multimodal network connectivity and enhance public safety for people walking and biking across the all canal. Uh, some additional needs associated with the project are listed here as well. So safety from traffic, improved, improved evacuation, um, connectivity, travel, time convenience, and affordable access. Um, so as John mentioned earlier, the concept of providing an additional crossing across the Alawai Canal is not new. Momentum really picked up with the publication of the Waikiki Regional Circulator Study in 2013. And that really that examined the need for better pedestrian access into and out of Waikiki. It proposed multiple locations for new bike and pedestrian uh, connections, one of which is a new new bridge or a new crossing at the University Kalaimoku alignment. Um, a crossing in this vicinity was also identified as a project in the Oahu Bicycle Plan um, and as a as a link within the lay of parks paths. Um, and in 2018, the city embarked on what you see here, the alternatives analysis, um, which really had the goal of narrowing this realm of possibilities. What are these, what types of crossings are appropriate um, that really meet the purpose and need? And looking at that project, the study area was defined as a 20 minute walk or bike ride from Waikiki, um, both with an existing crossing and um, and without, so kind of comparing the two. And so these, what you see here are some of the statistics of this study area, uh, the people for whom the project is being designed. I really wanna highlight the one in the middle, about 25% of Waikiki and Makali Mo'ili Ili residents do not own a car and regularly commute by means other than a car. Um, and that's, you know, telling when we can, we, we can provide additional transportation options um, to community members like that. Uh, so with that, we're, that was about the study area. Let's hear a little bit more about you. We have some, we have uh, three more poll questions and then we'll get into the rest of the presentation. So I'll turn it back to Natalie. Thank you, Meredith. Um, so right now we wanted to get, learn a little bit more about you guys. Um, so the first one is, uh, do you live, work, recreate, or visit the area? Um, you can select multiple since we know that uh, 
you know, you can do different things in different areas. So live in the project vicinity, work, use the Alloy Promenade, park user, drive in the area, just interested or other. Once again, people got really good at this. The answers are coming in fast. Okay. So most people on the call today live in the project vicinity, um, followed by park users and uh, working in the project vicinity. And then I'll stop sharing the results. Number five. Uh, how, how do you access the area? Most people access the area using their personal vehicle, followed by walking and rolling and then biking. Okay, for the last polling question for the evening. How often do you use this area? Every day, a few times a week, between once a week and once a month, less than once a month, never, I do not know, other. If you're answering other, feel free to throw that in the chat and we'll also compile it with the results. Thank you, Joy. All right. Uh, how often do you use this area? Every day, um, which is great to hear. Uh, thank you guys for answering the polls this evening. Great, thank you, Natalie. And thank you everyone for, um, for walking through that with us. It's helpful to understand, to know who's there, especially when we're doing this virtually, it's helpful to have a little bit more context um, as to your familiarity with the project area. So thank you. Um, so I'm gonna jump back into the alternatives analysis as to what, what was um, analyzed, I guess. So within that, we actually evaluated nine different potential alternatives for crossings. Um, and these were scored against the purpose and need statement um, and so what those nine were, we looked at enhancing existing crossings. That's the current bridges across the canal, the Al Moana, Kalakaua, and Macaulay. Uh, we looked at creating new crossings and the, in two potential alignments. And then we also looked at other alternatives that were non-bridge alternatives, such as an aerial tram, an aqua bus, and a tunnel. And lastly, we evaluated a no-build alternative. And uh, analysis and public feedback in that process identified the approximate University Avenue alignment as the preferred alternative that best achieves the project's purpose and need, um, which is to improve the access for people walking, uh, traveling by foot or bicycle across the Alawai Canal. So with this new crossing um, in the vicinity of University Avenue as the preferred alternative, the next step was to evaluate the bridge types um, and to see which ones most closely align with the preferred experience uh, based on community meetings uh, that were held as part of the alternatives analysis. So the bridge type evaluation also used um, criteria to assess feasibility and potential impacts of different bridge, um, bridge types for a new crossing. And the list of potential bridges, bridge types was narrowed down based on constraints um, and one being the need for a clear span, meaning no, no piers, no physical impact within the canal itself. Um, so a clear span of the water. And this really avoids the environmental and hydraulic flow impacts associated with adding structures into the canal. The two bridge types you see on the right-hand side of the screen um, were identified as the preferred alternatives, the preferred bridge types uh, within the alternatives analysis. Um, and oops, in 2019. And uh, some of the other feedback we heard within the, the community meetings was, you know, that we want to see 
uh, our community members would like to see a little bit more visualization about what this would look like. Obviously, those sketches that were on the previous slide are not enough to give a true understanding. Um, you also want to see what the impact to the view shed would be and lighting and maintenance and many, many other things. Uh, much of that is addressed in and will be addressed in preliminary engineering, which is the phase that we're in right now. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn this over to Jim McConnell of our consultant team to walk us through the project overview and the current uh, the, the current project overall. Thanks, Meredith. Uh, so just to continue on uh, Meredith's presentation, you know, based on the alternatives analysis, the community feedback and purpose and need, uh, we looked at a number of different criteria, uh, obviously user safety being paramount. Uh, maintainability, aesthetic, structural performance, destructibility, uh, and all of those really pointed to uh, the clear span option utilizing the table stay bridge. Um, if folks are interested in learning more about that um, in the breakout session, please attend the aesthetic side and I can, I can provide more detail. Next slide, please. So here's an aerial view, uh, the dashed white line uh, white lines there indicate uh, the exact location on the alignment from Kalemoku Street to University Avenue. And on the left side, you'll notice some dashed lines alongside uh, Mackay uh, of Alawai Boulevard and the canal. And that is where we have our stairs and our ramp area that allows uh, pedestrians and bicyclists to make it down to the grade level at Alawai Boulevard. Next slide. This is a view looking uh, every direction. Uh, the tower is about 180 feet tall. We're looking at a 290 foot clear span. You'll also notice to the right of the tower, a back span or a back stay. Uh, these are cables that are required to anchor the main tower of the bridge, which is um, picking up the majority of the load and forcing those down into the ground deep th through, through deep foundations, drilled shaft foundations. And this allows us to have a very light structure uh, above the deck that is spanning that 190 feet. Uh, what you'll also notice and recall is, uh, and you can see it on the right side of this slide as well, is that we have a very, very narrow landing area uh, on the Mackay side. It's less than 30 feet from the canal wall to the curb line. Uh, and that is a very narrow uh, amount of land space to uh, look at foundation systems. And that's one of the reasons why we looked at this particular bridge type. Looking back at Diamond Head again, you can see the tower um, and, and how the really the sight lines from the uh, McCulley Bridge are much less obscured than some of the other options that we considered using the cable stay design approach. Next slide. And then a view from University looking Mackay. Um, there's an existing park entrance there. Looking back, oh, sorry. I was just highlighting on the right side of the screen, you have a bike trail. Peaky Trail, Peaky Station, uh, and that will uh, connect to the to the bridge as well through the park. This is on the Mackay side, uh, Alawai Boulevard, looking Malka across the bridge. You can see on the left side, we have a stair that provides direct access up to the deck itself. And then on the right side, we have ADA compliant ramps that allow for accessible access as well as for bicycles uh, to gain direct access from Alawai Boulevard. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a view on the bridge walking uh, Malka uh, towards University Avenue. You can see the cables as they come down. Uh, you've got a handrail there that will be protected uh, to, to keep people inside the bridge. Um, next slide. Uh, the handrails are going to provide illumination. We're looking to reduce the amount of visual clutter that you would find on a typical uh, pedestrian bridge or vehicle bridge, uh, which would have a, a, a mast or a post-based lighting system. So these lighting systems are, are concealed within the handrails, but provide sufficient lighting. You'll also notice the tower has several openings in those. Those are really born out of functionality. Uh, one of the things it does is that it allows the structure to be much lighter so we can have less expensive and, and shallower foundation systems. The other thing it does is that it allows wind to pass through the structure. Uh, so we don't have noise, or we don't have any uplift or other forces uh, 
acting upon the tower itself, which also allows us to reduce the amount of cables, reduce the diameter of cables, and reduce the height of the bridge and also the depth of foundations. Um, every one of the elements that you're seeing with the bridge design really has a highly functional requirement based on the structural engineering uh, and physics requirements for the structure. On the right side, on the bottom, you can see sort of a gathering place uh, at the university connection to the bridge, um, as well as the connection to the existing Alawai Trail on the Malchus side. And you can see the, the canoes laid down on the ground there uh, as well, which were providing uh, access um, during construction and post-construction. And this slide also shows you the ramp condition on the Mackay side as you would ramp down uh, and make your way down to Alawai Boulevard. This is a cross section on the top left that shows you the exact condition at the sidewalk, uh, between the sidewalk and the bridge deck itself. Uh, the elevation here was set by the need to clear the 100 year floodplain elevation. That's the green. We hope we never have to experience that. Uh, the blue level at the, at the lower side of the section there is the current uh, mean sea level elevation of the canal. So as we all know, when we get flood rains, that elevation rises up and sometimes slightly crests the wall of the canal. Um, and the bridge really was set uh, based on the 100-year flood clearance to allow for emergency egress and functionality in an evacuation scenario from Waikiki. Uh, and then again, uh, here on the next slide, uh, you can see on the left the, the stairs and the ramp leading up to the bridge deck, then working your way, Malka. Um, those triangular shapes depict the, um, the footings and foundation systems uh, that the tower is anchored onto. Uh, and then you can see the Malka landing there that provides access uh, to and around and from the, the bridge from the Alawai Trail and from University Avenue via the park connection. Next slide. So we've turned this on you uh, 90 degrees. So the canal is along the top of the page and we are now parallel to Alawai Boulevard. And this gives you um, an indication of how this ramp system uh, connects into the existing uh, sidewalk system and bike lane system. So we will be taking up a few parking spots uh, on the side of Alawai Boulevard in order to create that amount of land space that's needed to build the bridge and provide for uh, the ramps and access to and from the bridge. And then back on the Malka side, this is the current design. So the, the prior images that were shared this, is just, this image gives you a better sense of the, the final uh, proposed landscape condition. So there's a lot more integration of landscaping and changes in grade, uh, less hardscape than we're showing you in some of these concept renderings. Uh, you can also see the community garden off to the right, uh, the canoe hale or halau off to the left. And then uh, in the gray shaded area, you begin to see some of the new sidewalk connection that takes you up to University Avenue. And then, of course, the car is indicating the parking area uh, for the existing park. Uh, so Meredith is pointing out that that new connection up to University Avenue from the bridge itself and to the uh, pedestrian uh, and bicycle network. And the gray area is depicting the new parking lot layout. We are actually uh, able to put back more parking spaces in the proposed scheme than there are there currently today. This is a slide back on the Mackay side. Um, the cyan colored uh, blocks that you're looking at are meant to depict the heavy equipment that will be needed to install the drilled shaft foundations. Um, these go straight down into the earth, into the sand, down to the coral layer. Uh, and these are required for the bridge deck to land on. Uh, they do pick up some load on the Mackay side. So the operation of getting those in is gonna require that this section of uh, uh, the boulevard is closed during construction. Uh, just to be conservative, uh, we've indicated that all three lanes would need to be fully closed, but we're going to work with the contractors in the future to find maybe some innovation around where this equipment can be placed uh, to open things up and make it a little bit easier during construction. But for the purposes of planning, we wanted to put in the worst case uh, scenario. So that would be closure, uh, but it would be temporary for maybe a period of a few weeks, uh, nighttime work only, uh, while this work is installed. And mainly the work is drilled shaft operation. Once that's finished, um, no more disruption would occur on uh, Alawad Boulevard. And 
And then back on the Malka side, this is really where we have most activity because of the amount of um, space we have to work with, also because that's where the tower is and the bulk of the structural systems are located that are needed to support the loads coming off of this span, this bridge. So we're looking at a temporary parking lot closure uh, near the primary construction site where we're proposing that there would be a pre-casting yard where each one of the deck sections would be cast in place and then they would be floated out by barge um, and lifted into place. Uh, we're gonna provide some temporary parking. Uh, we're gonna provide crossing guards to main sh make sure that we have uh, safe vehicle access and pedestrian access uh, during construction. I mentioned floating the deck sections out. This is just uh, an image to help sort of understand how the, the deck sections get lifted in. So the section you're looking at now would be precast uh, on the Malka side. It would be loaded onto a barge. The barge would be moved into position. And then the rig that's shown there in yellow would hoist the section up into place. And then it would be attached to a new set of cables. And then sequentially, this process occurs all the way across the canal. And this process will allow us to keep the canal also open during construction. Uh, we won't have to um, fully close it, but for very short, limited durations of time. Next slide. And this is the type of barge equipment that would sort of move between the shoreline and to the position where the new precast section needs to be lifted. There are soldier piles. They're uh, driven into the mud line. They're not permanent. They're not deep structures, but they do help to position um, this floating barge into place while the lift operation occurs. And then those are movable uh, to pick up the next section. Next slide. And then this is the completed project overview. So you can see moving Mackay up to the bridge, uh, then heading Malka towards the uh, boathouse and parking lot, University Avenue connection, the enlarged parking lot, green space, uh, and the completed project with a full connection between Waikiki and Mwailili University side of the project. Uh, and then one thing to point out, uh, the project is being federally funded largely. 80% uh, of the money is coming from the federal government. Um, there's the 6.9%, 20% local match um, for a $35 million structure uh, and, and new asset for the city and county of Honolulu. That's really, a really good uh, contribution. And so we're very excited to move ahead um, into the next phases of exploration with the proposed project. And with that, I'd like to turn it over um, to Linda Fisher, who is leading our environmental process. Thanks, Jim. Thank you for that overview. And so I just want to briefly uh, explain the environmental process that we are undergoing right now that is underway. And so the project is subject to not only the Hawaii um, HRS Chapter 343 environmental review, but also subject to the National Environmental Policy Act review, um, given the federal funding and, and federal involvement in the project through FHWA. So under NEPA, or National Environmental Policy Act, there's several other regulations that um, also come into play, which are listed here on the slide. And I won't go into much detail, but these regulations are also um, disclosed in the draft environmental assessment. And uh, what is done is a review of how the project complies with each of these individual regulations. So that information is presented in the draft environmental assessment for, for public review. Um, and so what also is explained in the draft environmental assessment is uh, the review that the project has to undergo for HRS 6E8 compliance, not specific to the cultural impact assessment. And actually, um, our breakout session for the historic, cultural, and archaeological resources can will discuss that further. And you can um, ask questions there in that breakout session regarding the cultural impact assessment, if need be. So I just want to under, have you all understand that the city, with um, in coordination with Federal Highways and the Hawaii Department of Transportation, have have reviewed, evaluated the project effects under HRS. Chapter 343 and under NEPA, it is a joint draft environmental assessment. So if you wanna move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. 
One of the specific regulations that the project also has to comply with is Section 4F of the um, Department of Transportation Act. Section 4F is um, specific to the preservation and protection of certain types of resources when approving transportation projects. And it applies whenever Federal Highway Administration has an action that involves the use of publicly owned parks, recreation areas, wildlife or wild waterfowl refuges, um, or land from a historic site. And such land can be used for federal aid highway projects only if there's no feasible and prudent, prudent alternative and all possible planning has been taken to avoid the use of these Section 4F properties and to minimize any harm um, or, or property effects from the project on these properties. So the project has done a Section 4F review um, because of the uh, potential effects to the Alawai Neighborhood Park. And so the project team and city and county of Honolulu with uh, Federal Highways Coordination have prepared a de minimis evaluation for the project's potential effects on the Alawai Neighborhood Park. And information regarding um, the potential effects on the park, um, both during construction and then um, permanently can be found and discussed further in the breakout room for recreation. But we are at this time taking comment under section 4F on the de minimis evaluation. Um, these comments will be considered in development of the final environmental assessment. And after that, the Federal Highways Administration will make a determination on the de minimis evaluation. So with that, I will turn it back over to Meredith for the next steps. Great, thank you. Um, so where are we now with this project? Uh, Linda mentioned that you know, we have this draft environmental assessment. It was published on March 23rd. So we are in the public comment period. Um, and that will go through April 22nd. Um, today, I just wanna clarify kind of this, this particular meeting. The comments that we received today will be kind of summarized within our reporting. But if you have really specific comments, um, I encourage you to submit those in writing and you can do that via the web comment form and all the information is in the chat. Um, it's via the web comment form, uh, via email or via post mail. Um, and I encourage you to, to submit your comments specifically in writing if, if you are interested in, in, um, in doing so. But today, you know, we're here to help address any, any questions, any clarifying questions you may have about the project um, to help make sure that, you know, you can um, articulate those comments appropriately. Uh, so once we have that, um, we will review all of the comments that were submitted as part of this process um, as we work to develop the, the final environmental assessment. Um, so that is where we stand with the project. And we are about to jump into breakout rooms. Uh, just before we do so, there's um, this may be new to many of you. Uh, you'll have the ability to navigate and choose which breakout room you go to. Um, and you can move once you're already in a room. So we're going to have a little bit of information and another mini Zoom tutorial from Natalie uh, before we break out. Thank you, Meredith. Um, and thank you all so much for bearing with us as we got through the nitty gritty details. Um, now, hopefully this is the fun part, getting into breakout group rooms on some different topics. Um, we hope that you engage us with some questions. Uh, you can type your name in the chat and a facilitator will call on you, or you can type your, chat, your question or directly into the chat box. Um, to preserve sound quality, we ask that you guys keep yourself muted until you're called on um, or asked to unmute so that we can make sure that everybody can hear what's going on and hear the answers. Um, and we also recognize that time is going to be a little bit limited. So um, we ask that you uh, try and share the time with other people to ask questions as well. Um, we're going to be doing a series of breakout rooms for about 20 minutes each so that you're able to attend more than one um, topical area. Um, Meredith, can you get the next slide? Um, the breakout rooms will be on transportation, infrastructure, and utilities uh, in room number one. Number two is historic, cultural, and archaeological resources. Three is recreation in section 4F. 
for is views and aesthetics, which kind of gets to um, also some of the construction approaches, um, public services, fire, police, schools, and then the natural environment. Um, so flora, fauna kind of topics. Um, Meredith, anything I'm missing on those? Okay. Um, and then this last part is how to get into the breakout rooms. Um, there's going to be in the window at the bottom, a breakout room that opens um, and you can select which room you wanna go into and you're able to move around in between them. Um, so right here, if you click on it again, you can um, switch breakout rooms, uh, click join, move to another room. Um, if you're having trouble getting into the breakout room, please send a message to me as the host um, and I can help get you into the room that you wanna be in. Um, Cause we realize that sometimes the, the little toggle at the bottom sometimes disappears. Um, and then if you've called in, uh, let me know what room you wanna go into. Um, so with that, I think we'll go ahead and get them open. Um, sound good, Meredith? All right. Yes, and I will say before before people move into the breakout rooms, um, you know, we, we do appreciate everybody for, uh, we appreciate you all joining us here today. Uh, feel free to stay as long as you like in the breakout rooms. Um, we will be doing 20 minute, um, we are gonna break after 20 minutes to let you switch between rooms. But if you choose to switch before that, feel free to do so. Just realize that there's already an active conversation going on. So please be respectful. Um, but we will not be coming back to this main main room. Um, the rest of the meeting will be will take place in the in the breakout room. So um, yeah, appreciate you being with us tonight, and look forward to hearing the discussion. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm going to open the rooms now. <laughs> 